Next presentation is a uh, green deal, a modern uh, RISC V microprocessor designed entirely in an agile open source EDF law. Speaker is Miss Ifei Zhu, uh, Rios Lab student of the Tsinghua University, uh, Rios Lab. Uh, Rios Lab was founded in 2019 19, as part of uh, Tsinghua Berkeley uh, Shinchen uh, Institute. The RISC V International Open Source Laboratory, uh, Rios Lab, began its journey of bringing the research effort of this five CPU with its software and hardware ecosystem from UC Berkeley to the rest of the world. As a premier member of the this five foundation, uh, Rios is aiming to demonstrate its commitment to the open source platform for chip de developers with far more economical and efficient technology. So presentation is 20 minutes long. So I ring a bell once when 15 minutes passed. So Q&A session is 10 minutes long. So would you start, uh, Ms. Uh, Ifei san Okay. Konnichiwa, mein Name der Neider der Shi. Okay, hello everyone. We are from Rose Lab, Tsinghua University. Today, I will share our tape out theorems with purely open source EDA tools in the Efabless Chip Ignite program. This is a full stack design methodology for modern RACE 5 processor in fully open source mode. Here is the outline of my presentation. I will go through the whole design flow of our processor GreenRail. In recent years, we have witnessed the increased complexity of IC design in advanced processing technologies. The skyrocketing cost, difficulty, and risk of design have put silicon implementation out of the search of the system innovators. So lowering the threshold for CPU design and enabling agile development in fully open source mode are our goals and expectations. Besides, in order to facilitate open EDA's iteration and RISC V chips development, we aim to provide the community with a reference design. Compared with the booming status of the open source software industry for decades, the open process of hardware is not as that good. Fortunately, there have been some excellent achievements since two years ago. Now, we have already had the complex backend two chains, but few groups tried them in a relatively complex design. So, we want to know whether the open two chain can be used to develop a complex RISC V architecture. As shown in this table, we compared our green rail to other existing RISC-5 microarchitecture. Except our design, other processors developed with Open2 have relatively few gate count and do not have some advanced feature of our modern microarchitectures. Our design is one of the most complex and advanced architecture among all Chip Ignite and Google-sponsored Open MPW program. We passed the pre-check and successfully tape out. This graph shows our whole design flow. In the front end, our core is written in sensible Verilog. For verification, we apply multiple open source RISC-V benchmarks and do some innovation based on them. It's worth mentioning that the RISC-V cell model is play an important role in our co-simulation environment. For the back end, the open road and open PDK are used. Here comes the front end of green rail. We choose to write our core in system Verilog because it is completely supported by most dedicated EDA software. However, for most open tools such as Uses or Verilator, full syntax support for system Verilog is still very limited. We believe such support is essential as the current mainstream IP are in system Verilog. 
At present, in order to quickly adapt to an open source backend flow, there is a strong need for automatic translation of hardware programming language into Verilog. Otherwise, RTO has to be manually developed with Verilog or Chisel, but we won't want to do that because of the trouble brought about by verification. We have explored two open source tools for that translating. They are Sherlock plus UHD and SV2V. As shown in this table, we collect the pass rate of Verilog translation for this RIS-5 course using the two tools respectively. Besides their time-consuming process, both of them are not perfect enough. They cannot guarantee the correctness for some complex syntax structure, for example, as enums or breaks in for loops. After translation, we have to do formal verification, but there is no open tools like Cadence Conformal. We believe such tools are fundamental to the open ecolog ecological chain of chip design. As for the core specification, we design a seven-stage RIS-5 core called GreenRail, which supports dynamic branch prediction, out-of-order execution, and has a non-blocking non data cache. The CPU's front backend and front end is divided by its code unit. From stage 0 to stage 3, the predict PC is obtained through GShare and the branch predict branch target buffer, and the redirect target is obtained from the backend. The fetch instructions are put into a FIFO queue, and after decoding is stage 4, the ISA register are renamed, and the reorder buffer keeps the instruction program order and support process exception. Meanwhile, dependency checks are done between two consecutive instructions to allow dual issuing. The instructions are executed in their corresponding units for load and store operation. First, the address is calculated, then the request is sent to dcache. MSHR are used to explain cache bandwidth. Then at last stage, it write back results. The instruction can graduate only after it and all previous instruction write back their values. Now it may seem like a modern RIS-5 processor toy, but we will continue to iterate it afterwards. The SOC of GreenRail is adapted from another open project in MPW6. In this figure, the master is carryview defined. It loads a binary into instruction SRAM and data RAM, and our core fill is iCache and dcache through the wishbone bus. The arbiter is used to handle the access priority of data SRAM and peripherals. We hardened all of them and integrated into the user-defined era of carryview. We're developing a complex hardware structure. There are two bottlenecks. There are syntax checking and RTO simulation. There later is an open source Verilog hardware simulator that can instantiate top levels module, and it is integrated with a lint system to check syntax error. To achieve functional robustness, we have to run various tests on the core. Currently, there are multiple open source verification resources provided for RIS-5 architectures. For example, the RIS-5 test repository has ISA coverage tests and typical benchmarks. There are also RIS-5 torture that can be used for more complex pattern. Meanwhile, we accept a golden model to reflect the correct architecture states in each CPU cycle. Doing code simulation with software language is a trend in IC front-end field, so we apply RIS-5 cell model in our design flow. When verifying the design, in order to comprehensively check its behavior, it's necessary to generate a large number of tests that hit different corner cases. Therefore, adding some randomness and being more flexible to, to adjust the test config is necessary. Google DV is an example generator, but it needs lots of prerequisites and has full support for Verilog. We have also developed an open source random test generator called Talon in order to meet the need. Currently, Talon is, is, is in, integrated into RISCOF, which is an open open source framework testing of RIS-5 target. As compared to the released RIS-5 CTG, our generator provides a verification strategy with, mo with, more, with stronger randomness and has more configurable constraints. We run the test generated in the code simulation environment. The reverse model has to be golden enough for transactional level based by simulation, so we use cell model into it. Cell is a domain-specific language for expressing the ISA semantic. 
and the RIS-5 cell is the current golden reference model for modern RIS-5 microarchitectures. This model allows for more flexibility in ISA extension and provides a clear method to dump information from its in instruction stream. This figure shows our CoSIM environment. We split CPU into front-end and back-end and verify them respectively by comparing the result generated by RTO and cell. Binary are loaded into cell and RTO simultaneously. For CPU's front-end, we check the decoding results and predict the branch directions through cell's instruction processing trees. In the back-end CoSIM, the, the decoded instruction string is fed into RTO's back-end. We check instruction commit order and register by comparing RTO's output to sale execution log. Regardless of the implementation, the front end is technology independence. Once the front end has been completed, the core needs to be hardened. In 2020, Shannon introduced OpenLAN. It is an automated flow performing full ASIC implementation from RTO to GDS. Skywater also launched its own PDK. In a large-scale project, external IP are usually used to speed up the process. For example, OpenRAN, a famous open-source memory IP, is served as the iCache and dCache in our processor. And thanks to Chip Ignite and Google-sponsored OpenMPW program, the threshold for chip design is further low. And this is the first time in our life that we have designed and tape out. OpenLAN and OpenPDK are used to harden our core. We keep trying and put forward five solutions within two weeks. At the beginning, we want to leave everything to OpenLAN itself, from synthesis, flow plan, and PNR. We just input our RTO code, library dependence, and timing constraint file, then just wait for OpenLAN's response. But the program fold in detail placement and report there's not, not enough space. It's a little unreasonable because the space is not actually, so we guess it may not down the flow plan very well, especially for the eight big macros, which are instantiated from OpenLAN. RAM. Therefore, we believe that manual participation is required. So this time we place the SRAM macro manually. This picture shows the placement of the SRAM. We put them on the edge of the map and let OpenLAN handle other parts. In this attempt, we find that routing time is very long, even for more than 10 hours. So we try to keep it from working. We check OpenLAN's log and conclude that there might be two courses. First, the efficiency of the routing algorithm in open road is relatively low. It search for a solution in a brutal force way, so the convergence is very time consuming. Next, maybe the standard cell may not be placed scientifically. If the placement is inappropriate, the routing time will also increase. So we decide to add further human intervention. We refer to another design called Restrino, which is a 32-bit RIS-5 core-based SOC design. Referring to its backend config file, we develop our our core into 13 sub module. First, harden these modules respectively, then use the GDS to harden the whole chip. The whole flow costs about five hours, but millions of DRC errors are found by Magic and Kili out. Most of them are bought by OpenRAM. Afterwards, we set abstraction layer to eight SRAM to prevent routing on them, but there are still thousands of DRC violations. We think that maybe too many sub module blocks means smaller blank place, and there are more more than 2,000 2, wires between these macros. So open lab is not competent for such complicated routing work at present. So it will easily lead to routing congestion. Based on this, we may th further improvement. In this time, we reduce the number of submodules to 11. The Indeed, we get better results, but there are still about 100 DRC errors. So follow this dir direction. Again, we will adjust the number of submodules to 9 and find a successful strategy. We flattened all modules except SRAM. As shown in the right figure, we harden our course top module, then harden the whole chip. It finished in about four hours. We get a clean GDS file with no DRC or LVS errors. Then it can pass a fabulous pre-check and tape check. Through this experience, we are interested in developing a more effective routing algorithm to the open silicon flow. We are using the upcoming Green Road 2 to do some backend optimization exploration. 
Based on our usage of open EDA tools, we provide some feedback. First of all, when the design scale is large or contains many hardened IP, we need to complete the hierarchical design and floor plan manually. This can help open source tool to complete the flow easier and faster. Besides, as for open LAN itself, we accept some optimization. For example, the automatic floor plan for complex design is recommended, and when there's smart placement and routing algorithm. Besides, it should provide enough hint for users to reduce DRC and LVS violation to get rid of annoying, annoying trials and errors. So it's refreshing that OpenLAN includes several components too, such as users, open roads, and magic. So the improvement to any tool is beneficial to the whole design flow. In this work, we had a green rail with both OpenLang and proprietary EDA2 to get the performance gap between OpenTools and the proprietary one. We use Genius for any novas for reference. Under the same clock frequency, the error optimization performance has reached 60% of that of proprietary ones. Besides, OpenLAN is better in terms of automation. We also explore, explore some other features that come down to its functional enhancement, processing efficiency, and user experience. This figure shows OpenLens versus Cadence EDA flow. The needs for complex support for system reload goes against extensive IP usage. And compared with Cadence 2 conformal, the LEC function in OpenLens cannot work properly, even in its in its example design. From our experience, it's a little difficult to finish PNR step under a higher density. The suitability of config, config parameter, especially those related to floor plan and placement, is paramount to the completion of the whole process. Unrealistic parameter setting will cause early terminations and or endless run of the program. Therefore, to reduce the time cycle, automatic parameter searching or just providing some correct indication are needed. Besides, in order to accelerate silicon research, we accept speed up with multi-threading and the intelligent way to do PPA optimization. In fact, Google's Red Lab has already tried such parameter tuning job. Here shows our whole design flow and the final GDS generated by OpenLAN. Through this RIS-5 developing experience, we can see highlights of open EDA tools, such as the high speed of their later, the potential of RIS-5 cell model in verification, and great automation of open LAN. Meanwhile, there are several improvements to facilitate CPU's iteration. We would like scientific test generation algorithm design exploration with feedback from backend, or even PPA optimization with artificial intelligence. With the open ISA, RIS-5 is gradually pursued by the industry. The concept of open chip is gradually enters people's vision. Open chip mainly includes three aspects, open instruction set, open microarchitecture implementation, and open design flow with open tools. Currently, we have already have the open RIS-5 ISA, and the next thing to do is to design the microarchitecture with high performance or low power, then implement it, implement it with RT after after that, integrated into an open SOC, we go through the backend design flow and generate a clean GDS for tape out. Open EDA tools facilitate the whole process and promote building a fully open source chip design strategy. So in this work, we propose this full stack methodology to prove the feasibility of designing high performance chip in open source mode. This is meaningful for reducing open chips labor and cost of IP. In future, we hope to customize the chip with more amount of work like that in GCC or LVM. Meanwhile, forming the open chip ecology and promoting the reform of Warehouse scale computers industry indicates that processor architecture for dedicated computing enter a new golden era. So our lab will keep iterating our design. The upcoming Green Rail 2 is an OS and Keystone supported RISC-5 core with more, more complexity compared to Green Rail 1. We hope our effort can bring a new perspective on future RISC-5 architecture development. So thank you. Arigato gozaimasu. Uh, thank, uh, thank you very much, uh, Ife Shaoji. So, the uh, session is open for the Q&A. So, any questions?
Okay, I'm um, Shunpei Kawasaki of uh, Risk Five um, Alliance Japan, <coughs> and um, my question is about the slide that you showed in the, um, comparing that uh, commercial tool versus like um, open lane tools, like. You had like 1.6 times and that sort of stuff, uh, um, routing mm. uh, areas, power, and so forth. Can you show me that slide again? Mm -hmm. Oh, this is the one. Yeah. Mm. So you so you ran ran that uh, both. Yes. Tool flow. Yes. Okay. And. Uh, mm. You worked on both. You tried to optimize each one of each each of them, and then uh, finally came up with this notion that maybe 1.6x is mm. representative number. Is that uh, correct? Yes. We just run the two kinds of flow respectively and get the results. Mm. Which is pretty good. Uh, I think that, uh, like, I, I always estimated, like, maybe it's like 2x, but I don't, I, you know, and this is just actually getting to be almost like in the big picture a wash. So, okay. Okay, thank you. Sorry, I have a related question, maybe just a confirmation. So, in, in this slide, uh, does proprietary EDA means some commercial tools? Yes, uh, we okay. use Genius and Novas. Okay, I understand. And uh, I have one more question. Would you, so you frankly, you know, shared your several, you know, uh, trials, right? Of course, first, everything is rotten and uh, designed too large. Uh, you are not successful. So. I think, so maybe t 10 slides before, um, can you sh share the, you know, how SRAM is defined, SRAM macro is defined or something? Maybe 10 page before or something. Yeah, first attempt manual. Yes, so, so I'd like to confirm what it really means. So first, um, uh, so so result routing time is too long. Is uh, even you manually fake put the eight SRAM, and of course it's just a vacant box actually, and some terminals only. So yes. still routing time is too long. Yes, we uh, we manually do four plan of the SRAM and. And let open open land to run the process, and routing time it cost about ten hours, so okay. it cost a lot of time in yeah, the routing and placement. So PNR two does not know inside of SRAM, mm. no, right? Uh, so SRAM is just a vacant box, right? SRAM serves as the macro of the a uh, macro. Uh, black macro box. means just box with some terminal. Right? Yes, yes. Okay, I understand. And. Uh, I just confirm the successful conditions. Maybe next page. So you applied some hierarchical P and R for other pure logic part, right? Mm, pardon? I mean, ah, uh, um, My understanding is SRAM is OK. So, focus is logic part, consists of many, many gates, free flow, blah, 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 right? Uh, so, in this, in this stage, we use about 30 macro. We just, we harden it, we harden this block, mm -hmm. and this block is a macro. I see. And yeah. we integrate them into it and let open land to do the routine placement, blah, blah, blah. So, you apply the so called uh, hierarchical layout. Oh. Right, certain blocks you mentioned. Yes, thirty blocks. That certain block, each of certain block, 
correspond to the logical hierarchy in RTL? Um, the macro is just a function unit. We divide it according to its function. Okay, maybe. Okay, thank you. Sorry okay. for wrong question. Arigato. I see Google guys. <laughs> So yeah, I wanted to confirm to you that uh, what do you think, uh, so you found like that finally the working condition was to uh, integrate like the memory controller like with the memory and to reduce the number of macro so that you can go through the whole flow. Mm -hmm. And like it took you like a lot of trial and error to get there. Um, what do you wish uh, were there um, so that you could directly go to the winning solution? Like, do you think it's more documentation that's needed? Do you think it's uh, open lane that should do that automatically? Like, uh, what do you think is missing for for people to not have to do the same trial and error that you did? Uh, I think the first, uh, I think there are many points. The first point is uh, system log support. And the next one is the most important, is the, al the, is the routing algorithm and placement algorithm. Because I noticed the placement strategy in OpenLAN is just place the standard still randomly. Um, so this, this, this kind of placement will not scientific enough. And that will lead to routing, the, the, will lead to, Lead to that routing costs too much time. Mm. The, do you plan to continue? You mentioned that you plan to continue to develop uh, Green Rio. Yes. Uh, do you plan to continue to submit it to the shuttle? Or? Yes, our our lab is trying to do the next tape out. We have plenty of time, so please go ahead. Let me ask one more question. So. So you already taped out the design? Yes. And uh, send it to you know, Skywater? Yeah, yes, uh, yes. Smart project we have or something. So, so did you get, uh, you know, the, uh, the silicon return? Well, we just pass the tape out check and wait for the foundry to send back the chip to us. OK. So, so you don't know the real result, the silicon result, not yet, right? OK. Um. So w w what is the most valuable thing you have learned in this project? Mm, the most difficult thing, you mean? So, uh, you mean the most difficult thing, or? Yes, oh. effectively the uh, same. OK, so because this, <laughs> this is our first tape out, uh, so it's a little, it's very struggling, uh, we don't, at, at the beginning, we don't know what is tape out, and we don't know the specific step. Uh, so we just learn from books and learn from teachers and do lots of work and cost much time on learning the architecture itself and learning the backend design itself. So that's, that's also our first time to attach the EDA to chain. So that, I think that's the most tough part. So the so you don't have any very experienced, you know, yes. silicon guy, SOC mm -hmm. guy, no, right? Before, <laughs> yes, before oh, this it's table. It's amazing. So, okay, so thank you very much for Miss uh, Yifei Zhu. Mm -hmm. Very impressive talk. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you.